I do believe in the wisdom of Martin Luther King, that the arc of the universe may be long, but it bends towards justice. So I think justice is in our future, and we all have to work together. I think there are variations in health in the United States and in every society. Some variations are, are normal or, or naturally occurring. Um, what I have been focused on is uh, variations in health that are unjust and unfair. Why should the color of your skin determine the quality of your health? And why should where you live determine the quality of your health? In public health today, we say that for most Americans, your zip code is a stronger predictor of how long and how well you live than your genetic code. We have to understand health is shaped by everything we've been exposed to over entire life course. And one of the things that I have devoted my attention to, particularly for the last 25 years, is in trying to document scientifically exactly what else it is about race that matters so profoundly for health. Some experiences of discrimination people are aware of, and that can be a source of stress that adversely impacts health. It's the many generations of racism that really do change one's physiological status. The trauma of living in a racist society is really hard and does impact on your health. Dr. Williams has been a pioneer in really helping us understand the impact that race ethnicity has had on overall health status. Racism is part of the fabric of our country. And Dr. Williams has been brilliant. He has been persistent in helping us to see the ways in which all of these isms really impact our ability to give quality care and to improve the health of everyone. When I think about social justice, I think about sort of everyone having the opportunity to be as healthy as they can be. So thinking about how do we make sure that there are no barriers to um, health behaviors where we, where we live, no barriers to engaging in healthful behaviors where you work, um, having access to health care. What the reality is, what the evidence clearly tells us, is that medical care does not have much to do with health. Please don't get me wrong, medical care is important. I have a good doctor and I go to my physician and we all need to have good access to medical care. But our healthcare system primarily functions as a repair shop that takes care of individuals after they have begun become sick, but doesn't have a lot to do with what makes them sick in the first place. If all we do is patch people up and send them back to live in the same conditions that made them sick in the first place, we're not accomplishing very much. So population health is saying, can we step back and think of what can we do to build healthier communities in the first place? When I think of Cambridge Health Alliance, I think of um, organizations that are deeply committed to improving health, deeply committed to their communities, the mission of CHA is to improve the health of the community that we serve. And as such, the Community Health Improvement Department works collaboratively with community partners, as well as internally with uh, the clinical services. Our clinic is, you know, one of the top performers in the state. And the only reason we have that is because we've been given the resources to do it. Without the commitment of CHA, without the commitment of a lot of people, we would not be able to do it. We speak many languages in the clinic. Most of us speak more than two, three languages. So patients feel welcome. We make sure that they have food, transportation, because we may offer all these beautiful services, but if they cannot reach us, then it's a disservice to the patient. One of the things that's worrisome in the current political terrain that we're in. We have a lot of patients that are here under various immigration statuses and they're concerned about their access to health care, about their ability to maintain safe living situation, to maintain status here in this country. Working with organizations like the Cambridge Health Alliance is a step in the right direction and sometimes through that step you can enter a space where you can find hope. Equal and equitable access and equal and equitable care for everyone who comes through the door and everyone who's in the community. And that's what we practice here, and that's what we strive for. We, we work with the community and we look for hard-rich communities or hard-rich population. And what we do is we provide um, HIV tests and STI tests uh, for people that maybe 
they don't have the, the you know the proper education maybe they don't have there may be no link with uh, healthcare as well and what we do is we provide that without cost you program serve off and serve the community like information about insurance about protection about the self looking for help for people who need it and that they feel comfortable and happy come here and get it that information. We believe we serve everyone in this community. We are proud of who we are. We embrace our diversity and immigrants in this community. I am the son of working class Italian immigrants and they found Somerville uh, to be a city of hope and opportunity and, and no different today where we speak 52 languages in our neighborhoods and our schools. It's important that we help people feel part of this community and CHA is the health safety net for many communities. I'm a client myself. They also work with the community and with city government to understand the social determinants that impact health. They have done a number of things in Everett to make that police force more responsive and more integrated and more involved in the entire community. So for example, uh, some police officers took a crash course in Portuguese and in Spanish, so they at least would know some basics as they interacted uh, with minority communities. Um, police officers would attend community meetings, so they had a chance to hear firsthand what were the concerns that community residents had. We meet with CHA administrators on a regular basis to find out how we can work together. Um, and they're, you know, they played an important role um, in the community and, you know, it takes people like organizations like us, the police and CHA to work together to try to try to make better things happen for people in the community. We absolutely need community health systems like CHA, especially in this time where, um, you, you know, the, the, the future is not quite clear in terms of the level of the support for the most vulnerable populations that we have. I think it's vital and critical and important that we support organizations like CHA. What we do with communities, in communities, for communities, and for our patients can never be reimbursed uh, from insurers or others. I can't imagine anyone more deserving of the Art of Healing Award than David Williams. Uh, and for my money, he's the preeminent scholar on health inequalities in the country right now. Dr. Williams is a great choice for the CHA Award this year, since his research, leadership, and advocacy have been all that the Cambridge Health Alliance has aspired to during its whole career. I'm inspired by the words of Robert F. Kennedy. I would like to be a ripple of hope, and everywhere I go to inspire others to join me in being a ripple of hope wherever they are. We can do it if we work together. <laughs>